So the, the plan is very simple. I will start with uh, network visualization and I will end with uh, network automation. But before I start, I want to make um, a short introduction into networking, like a crash course in networking uh, for, those of, for those of you who don't know well what it means. So when I say network, what I mean is uh, a telecommunication network. It's a network which nodes are networking devices like routers, switches, and antennas, and a network which links are transmission links, usually uh, Ethernet cables and optical fibers. Um, in the network of an internet service provider, we find three main types of nodes, router, optical switch, and antenna. Uh, as you can see, these are very big devices, like uh, with lots of cards and lots of interfaces, so this has nothing to do with uh, the type of device that you would have like at home. Uh, these are corporate devices that we would find in the network of uh, a big company like Facebook or Google, or in the network of an internet service provider like Vodafone, Telefonica, and so on. Uh, same for the, for the transmission links. Uh, these are links like those ones. Uh, on the left, an internet cable with a 10G uh, capacity, a 10G connector, and on the, on the right, an optical fiber. So Ethernet cables are use, used for uh, short, short distance transmission, and optical fibers can be used for both uh, short distance transmission and long distance transmissions. Um, well, there are a few approximations in this slide because it's like to make it uh, simple for you to understand, but uh, if we imagine that you are in Rimini and you want to call someone in France, like with your mobile phone, with a 4G, uh, what would happen is that like your mobile phone will send a, a microwave signal to an antenna that should be located nearby, like uh, close to this Pala Congressi, and then uh, the signal will travel through a bunch of antennas. It will be a microwave signal, and this microwave part with antennas, we call it the microwave backhole. Uh, eventually, it will reach a, a, a router. A router is a device that will take the forwarding decision. Uh, what, what we can say about them, it's like, it's like the brain of the router. They, they know how to reach any part of the world, and uh, they will make the forwarding decision. They will know uh, which path the traffic has to take. In order to do that, the router has what we call a, a routing table, which is a table that associates uh, an outgoing interface to uh, an IP address. And finally, uh, since we want to go to France, which is very far, we need the signal to go very fast. So the router will send the signal to what we call an optical switch, and this optical switch will perform an electrical to optical uh, conversion, which means the signal is electrical at first, and it will become a wavelength, which is a stream of line a stream of light. And on top of that, in a single fiber, we can, uh, we can have usually up to 88 wavelengths, so 88 stream of lights, and this is a technology we call uh, wavelength division multiplexing, which is used to have very high uh, bandwidth capacity. When we buy network devices from a vendor like Cisco, Nokia, Huawei, uh, they usually provide what we call uh, a network management system. It's like a software or a web application that uh, can be used for network visualization, inventory, provisioning, supervision, and sometimes automation as well. It's a network that has like uh, an overview of the network of all devices. If we want to visualize our network, uh, the input file that we have is usually a network topology. It could be like a CSV file, Excel file, a text file. Basically, it's a file that will, contains, uh, that will contain the list of all nodes and the list of all links and the position of the nodes as well. So if we want to draw this network, uh, as you can see, if we draw like nodes at random positions, this doesn't yield a very good display. So we have to find other ways. Uh, we have basically two options. The first one is to use um, 
The first one is to draw the nodes at their, like, uh, at their physical location, where they are like, physically located, uh, by using GPS coordinates. Um, to do that, we use uh, a type of software that we call GIS software, which stands for Geographic Information System. And that allows us to, the idea is to draw maps and draw our network devices on this map. And the other option is to use a graph drawing algorithm. Uh, I will make a demonstration of both if, if it keeps working. So what I'm going to show now is how we can create a simple uh, GIS software in Python, so a software to, to draw maps. The first thing that we need is a, a GUI programming framework. Uh, we have a lot of such framework in, um, in Python. We have PyGTK, PyQt, WX Python, PySide. But the one I'm going to use is Techinter. It's Python interface to Tickle. And it's uh, the only GRIF framework that is like part of the standard Python distributions, which means you don't have to pip install anything. It's by default. Uh, it's a built-in module. Um, Inside that, that framework, we will need a widget for uh, drawing. All widgets have one. In TechInter, it's called a canvas. It's basically a widget that allows you to draw uh, circles, rectangles, but most importantly, polygons. And we will use, inside that widget, a method to draw polygon. The reason for that is that a map is actually just a set of polygons. If you look at Italy on this slide, uh, Italy is just like a polygon. It can be considered a polygon. So uh, to draw these polygons, we need to have coordinates. And we will use a, spe a special type of file, which is called uh, a shape file. A shape file is a file that contains uh, shapes. And the shape file that I'm going to use contain two types of shapes, polygons and multi-polygons. Shapes are described like um, as as a list of coordinates, as a list of points on the Earth, and a point on the Earth is defined as a longitude and a latitude. So the first library that we will use is called PySHP. It's simply a library that allows us to to draw uh, to extract the shapes from the shape file. It contains a, a reader object that we can use to read the file. Um, we can draw polygon with the create polygon method in TechInter, but as for multi-polygons, we cannot draw them. We can only draw polygons. So what we will need to do is to convert all the multi... A multi-polygon is actually just a set of polygons, and we will need to convert a multi-polygon into uh, multiple polygons in order to be able to draw them. And to do that, we will use uh, another library called ShapeLie. Uh, shape, the, when you use ShapeLie and you convert uh, a shapefile multipolygon into a ShapeLie multipolygon, it will actually make the multipolygon iterable, which means it, it will have this uh, double underscore iter function so that you can loop over the multipolygon to yield uh, all the, sh the polygons it contains. Um, as I've said, uh, shapefiles contain coordinates defined as the longitude and the latitude. And if you look on this slide, you will see that these are angles. But when we draw polygons uh, in, a, in a software, in a canvas, we cannot use angles. We, we need pixel coordinates. So we will have to make some kind of conversion from angles to pixel. This is actually a conversion from uh, 3D to 2D because we have a point on the Earth and we need to have a point on a plan. And this is what we call a projection. So um, there is a mathematical theorem by Gauss that basically says that if you make such a projection, like you have a sphere and you want to project this sphere on a map, it's called uh, the remarkable theorem, then you will lose some information in the process. Uh, there will be what we call a distortion. It could be a distortion of distance, of angles, of shapes, 
any distortion, but we will lose some information. For instance, if we consider the, the Mercator projection, it preserves angles, but it doesn't preserve uh, uh, areas. In order to make that uh, projection, to, to convert 3D coordinates to 2D coordinates, we will use another library called PyProj. Uh, it's a library where you can choose a, a type of projection. It could be Mercator, or it could be azimuthal orthographic, like you see on this slide. And you will, we will convert a longitude and a latitude into, um, into pixel coordinates. So if I sum up, we need uh, a GUI programming framework. We will use Techinter. Inside this framework, we will need to use a widget to draw polygons, Techinter's canvas. Uh, we need a file that contains the coordinates of the map, a shape file. We'll use PySHP to read the shape file. We'll use ShapeLy to convert multi-polygons into polygons. And we'll use PyProj to convert geographic coordinates into projected coordinates. So, uh, okay. Okay, well, I will open a Jupyter notebook to show you how it looks like. So, Okay, so, well. This first uh, code shows you how to initialize, take, in, take into our main window, and how to initialize a canvas, and finally how to use a create polygon method in order to create a polygons. If I start this code, I will get this, which is like a graphical interface with a polygon. Finally, I have, like, I have this uh, snippet to show you how to use PyProj. Uh, we need to initialize a projection. This EPSG code, like 331995, um, uh, stands for the Mercator projection. Then I have the longitude and latitude of Rimini. And I can use the Mercator projection to convert longitude and latitude into projected coordinates. And uh, I can use this uh, inverse equal true to make the reverse operation, which is convert projected coordinates into geographic coordinates. And if I run this code, I print the coordinates, we can see that we have the x, y, uh, x, y and longitude, latitude. Then um, I show you how to use uh, the shape file reader and how to import uh, shape lie, so I have this local path to a shape file, and uh, I will start with a reader object. I will extract all the shapes uh, from the shape file, and if I, when I loop over the shapes, I will convert all of them into shape lie shapes, so that multi polygons are iterable. Uh, like this. You see that I have this hazard shape uh, magic iter, and it returns true. So all multiple digon are iterable. And finally, uh, this is like, well, the final code that shows you everything, how to start the inter, how to, I give the local path to the shape file. I have this uh, two projected coordinates function uh, in order to convert longitude and latitude into projected coordinates. Um, I will read the, the file, extract all its shapes. I will loop over the polygons, convert them into shape like polygons. And finally, I will use the create polygon function. If I execute this code, I get this. 
It's very simple, but it's working. And I can improve, improve it a little bit by, um, I can change the projection here to have an azimuthal orthographic projection. Uh, I will create a, a circle with which radius is the radius of the Earth. And I will um, use Tekinter file, file dialog so that when you run the code, Tekinter will actually ask you to choose a file and it will then draw it. So if I run this code, it asks me for a file. And if I draw it, I get this. So this is very easy to do in Python. As you can see, it only takes like 30 lines of Python to, to get this result. So what I want to show now, if it works, No, it doesn't work. Uh. Okay, so I will actually use this method in order to import a real network. I will import project. This network file contains a real network. Uh, it's actually one of the main French uh, backbone. You will see in a few minutes. OK. So if I import this file. OK. So this is, this is one of the main um, French network, it is made of uh, about 350 optical switches. Uh, in case you're interested, these optical switches are Alcatel Lucent Photonic Service Switch, or PSS 1830. So basically, if you are in France and you're trying to, to use internet with your mobile phone or with your computer, well, there is a chance that the signal you send will actually be transported over this network. Um, of course, if I wanted to do just visualization, I could use um, frameworks like I could use a Google Map API, I could use GeoDjango, or I could use um, I could use D3 also if I wanted to to do it in JavaScript. But the reason why I want to um, to use an actual software is that I can uh, select some nodes, I can move them, I can delete them. I can create new nodes with a drag and drop system, so I can like, actually create a network. And I can look at the property of the node. Uh, for instance, if I put... the IP address here. OK. Well, I can say like this node has this IP address, and once this is done, I can hopefully start an SSH connection to the device like this. Okay, so the device I'm using, you don't see it from there, but it's actually just here on the ground. Uh, it's a Cisco 1841. Uh, Well, ah, it's back. Okay, so I'm connected to the router. Uh, there is a few things that I want to show you. The name of the router, it's called Router2. It's what you see on the left part right here. So this is what we call uh, the host name. If I want to change it, uh, what I need to do is to enter the configuration mode by writing configure terminal and then type hostname and the hostname I want, for instance, Rimini. And when I do that, you see that the hostname, the left part, is changed to Rimini. So what I'm going to do now 
Well, the idea is that if you have like a five, like 5,000 devices and you want to change the host name on all 5,000 devices, uh, you cannot possibly log into all the devices like by hand and change the host name yourself. So you, you need to automate this process and we, will, we can do this by using Python. So I will come back to my slide. Well, okay, so this is a slide, this is an overview of the network automation landscape, which is all the method you can use in order to uh, automate the network. The first one is the one that network engineers have been using for many years. It's simply to connect to the device with a library such as Paramico. Paramico is the default library in Python to start uh, SSH connections. But Paramico is very complicated to use. So network engineers have built other libraries on top of Paramico in order to make it easier for network engineers to uh, automate. The two most famous libraries are NetMico and Xcript. Finally, you have, um, you have also the NetConf and Yang solution. Uh, NetConf is a network configuration protocol and Yang is a modeling language that uh, we use to shape the data that are sent over NetConf. Uh, this is standardized by the IETF. Um, I don't want to spend too much time on this one, but just so you know, there was a talk at the last PyCon US in Portland about how to use NetConf and Yang. Finally, you can use, uh, you can use OSS protocols like uh, TL1 and SNMP with a Python library to SNMP, which is called PySNMP. But, well, SNMP is usually very complicated to use. Uh, you can also use configuration management tools. These tools originate from the DevOp, DevOps world, but they can actually be used um, for network devices as well. So you have Puppet, Chef, SaltStack, HPNA, but you have uh, also Ansible, which is the one that is um, gaining momentum at the time, and it's, it's an open source Python project. And well, if it works, I will make a demonstration of how to use NetMiko, Xscript, and Ansible in order to automate the, in order to change the host name. So I will come back to the code. I will just explain what I would have done. Um, what I wanted to do was to use Xscript, uh, NetMiko, and Ansible in order to show you how to do basic automation. Uh, I'm not sure I can still do it. Okay, I'm still connected to the Cisco device. You can see the host name is Remini. And if, if I use Xscript, so the idea is that I must create an account object uh, in order to give the credentials to connect to the device. I must um, create a host object to give him the IP address of the device. And finally, I will send all the commands required to, to make that automation. So if I, if I say hostname friends and I run this code, in a new shell, you see the hostname was changed to friends uh, without having to log into the device. So if we had like a lot of devices, what we would use is to multi-thread all the SSH connection in order to configure all the router at the same time. Uh, Xscript allows you to do this by, uh, if, I, if you loop over the IP address and you create host for each IP address, then you append them to a host list that will contain all the device that you want to run the script on. Uh, then Xscript will actually uh, use multiple threads so that all uh, SSH connections are done in parallel. And you have this max thread parameter here when you can say, I want at, I want at most five threads. Uh, you can do exactly the same thing with NetMiko. 
you have these connection parameters dictionary that contains uh, the credentials like username, password, as well as the IP address of the device. Um, you would use this connect handler to, to log into the device and uh, you will send all the command you need to send. So for instance, what I'm doing here is that uh, I'm adding a description to the, inter to the interface uh, fast Ethernet zero slash zero and I'm also storing the result of show running config, which, which is the configuration, the configuration of the router inside a, a config uh, variable. So if I run this script, it will take a few seconds. Okay, if I print config, I see that config contains the configuration of the router. Um, and if I look at the interface, um, the configuration of the interface, I see that it has this description OSPF interface. The, that configuration was pushed with NetMiko. Um, I can also do the same thing with Ansible by, I will start Sigwin. So, the idea with Ansible is that you have a file called uh, inventory. If I look at this file, you see it contains the IP address of the device you want to uh, send the script to. And you have what we call playbooks. These are this file uh, .yml, yaml files. Uh, you can look at one example here. Uh, in order to do the same thing, which is changing the host name. So I will first give the credential to Ansible and I will then use uh, the, the iOS config module um, and this line's hostname Paris will change the host name to Paris. So I can do that using Sigwin by writing Ansible playbook. I tell him that uh, the inventory file is inventory and I change the host name. Okay, uh, as you can see it worked. Uh, the Ansible script was sent to the device and the host name was changed. What I can also do is use the iOS command uh, Ansible module in order to um, send the show running config uh, command and then I will use copy to store this configuration in a file output.txt. Uh, I will also use Sigwin to send this one. So change host name, save running config. Okay. And if I look at the folder, you can see that I have this new output.txt file. And if I look at what's inside, it contains the configuration of my device. So, well, I had more things to show, but I think we can stop here. Thank you. Thanks, Antoine, for the talk. Uh, questions? Uh, when you want to use commands that will require confirmation, like, uh, I don't know, uh, res reload the, the router probably will... Uh, yes. Actually, with Xscript, um, you should look at the documentation. I don't know if I have internet. But if, if you look at Xscript documentation, uh, you can tell when, when uh, Xscript should expect a prompt that it does not recognize. For instance, if you connect to an Alcatel devices, sometimes it will ask you for uh, yes or no, say yes to continue the login part. And you can tell Xscript that if it sees yes, then it should understand that, this is, uh, that the device is expecting something. Mm -hmm. And that works perfectly. Hi, uh, maybe Hi. you have told us uh, where have you got uh, the data for the geographic uh, representation from? Where I took the shapefiles. 
Yeah, I mean the, the raw data where the two get it from. Um, the shapefiles, you can find them online. I just googled uh, shapefiles countries or shapefile continents. Uh, about the data of the network, that's uh, because, well, I work at the, uh, the company that uh, runs this network, so I did uh, an XML query to the to the SAM 5620, which is a software that supervises the network in order to retrieve the topology. Hi. Hi. Um, what are the best practices to map like a lot of devices? Yeah. Well, actually, the tool I made, I wanted to show it, but because of the technical issues, I couldn't. Um, can do that. That was my next demonstration. If you have like several uh, devices like this, what you could do is, what I did is like providing a graphical interface to XScript so that you don't have to code anything. It's all graphical. I can go to script, crea script creation and I can change the like make a script change host name. And then if I write configure terminal and then host name, you would like this part to be a variable, right? Is that your question? Yeah, let's say you have like yeah. So, devices, uh, the yeah. so using this uh, software, what you could do is like doing host name, which means um, replace this part with the, the host name value of the property of the device and you can save this script. Uh, then, if you look at the properties, it will look for the hostname properties, and it will replace the value. And actually, the hostname properties does not exist yet. So what I did is a way for network engineers to create properties on the fly, even if it does not exist. So I have this, um, I have a file called uh, change hostname, and it contains the value of the host name. And if I import this file like this, import host name, you can see that the property, well, it doesn't work here, but you can see that you have a new host name properties and it actually contains the value that is in the Excel file. And then what you would do is select all three devices like this and then you click on send the script, you will choose the script, and for each devices, the hostname part would be replaced with the actual value of hostname for the node, you know? Uh, this, is using, uh, on the this is using XScript. Ah, XScript on the, on the back. XScript, but uh, you could do the same using NetMiko, and you could do the same using Ansible as well. Okay. And if you wanted to do this like in pure Python, you would just need to have a dictionary that maps uh, well, the, the IP address of the device to the value of hostname or whatever you want, yeah, and that would work too. The question was if you use some vault or some you know, secret storage, something like that, because actually those credentials in customer environment are very, uh, let's say, uh, important. Ah, yeah, no, I don't use any secret storage because it was just for a simple demonstration, and well, right. it's not like, but yeah, you would need to encrypt the data in a real network. Okay, thanks. More questions? So, so is there an Ansible interface for PyNMS? Is it what? Can you run Ansible scripts, where it's like selecting a few hosts and right-click run script? Uh, actually, I want to add that as a new feature, but right now I'm not like, I'm just working on Ansible, trying to make a useful Ansible script, and then when I get something that that's working. I want to make uh, to make PyNMS like as a graphical interface for Ansible, so that you don't need to actually write the YAML file. You can uh, uh, do it graphically as well. More questions? Okay. 
Okay, no questions. So let's uh, thank Antoine again. Thanks. <laughs>